All right, we're on the Zero SRF today and we got something to talk about, all right? <sighs> Look at this storage though. This is nice, I have enough room for my Ridge wallet and my headphones. And I'm gonna try to stuff this charger in here as well. This is a, I believe this is a second gen charger on a first gen bike or second, I don't know, something like that. They said that it doesn't fit in the compartment very well, but it will fit because I pulled it out of it. And I am bringing this unironically today. I mean, it it fits. Good thing I didn't lock the keys in there, which are right here. Key in, on, on. Now let's get our music going. Choctaw bingo, let's go. Should probably put the plate on here, but you know, I'm not gonna. I'll do that at the shop, because that's where we're headed. All right, let's go, just like that. All righty, everybody. It's your boy, Dude with Dingleberry, and we're back on the Zero SRF. Uh, I borrowed this bike from WoW. They let me have it for a month to do like a, a daily a test to see how these bikes do. I, 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 I kind of wanted more like a live-in test. I'm going this way, so. Oh, you dumb, you old dumb bitch. Woo, that was interesting. Today, I want to talk about something called range anxiety. This is something that you don't really get in gas vehicles because there's a gas station at pretty much every corner in America and most first world countries. Actually, a lot of not first world countries too. So I charged this bad boy last night, kinda. It was at about 40 some odd miles. I wanna say about 46 miles in the, uh, in the battery. When I started charging it, I let it charge for about three, three and a half hours. And we had a whopping 70 some odd miles when we hopped on it today. I went to the gym, which is less than uh, a mile from my house, to a to couple miles from the house anyway, and it went from 70 to 65, and we left just a second ago with 65, and now we're down to 64 miles to the tank, or to the battery rather. The shop is about 10 miles or so from my house, and we're gonna be a little bit heavy on it. Let's see what we knock down. Uh, I was a little concerned when I charged it last night, and the range went from like, I don't know, 30, 40% and had 46 miles and then I charged it uh, to 85% and it only had about 70 miles. A little bit concerning. I don't know if that calculates the way I've been riding or if that's just kind of like a, you know, whatever thing. But that is something that I, I find to be interesting. All I did was ride to the gym. I did go goose it a little bit on the way to the gym. How could you not? So realistically, if uh, all goes according to plan, we should have 10 miles less when we get to the shop. Uh, one of the things that I'm doing today at the shop is I'm meeting a friend of mine who uh, wants something that I'm selling. I sell stuff on Facebook Marketplace all the time. And while today's an off day, I'm still gonna head to the shop. But you guys notice me jamming the charge cable in the, uh, in the center console, the center box, whatever you wanna call it in this thing. And that's because uh, I, wanna, I just wanna charge it a little bit when I'm at the shop you know, while I'm there to kind of knock off or kind of add some of the miles back to the bike. Because uh, we've only been like two or three miles and we're down almost five miles. And again, I don't know how this thing calculates the mileage. I'm not worried about running out of battery between here and the shop, but I figured since it's an electric bike, I might as well just top it off any chance I get. And obviously I'm not gonna be there for a super long time. It's not like it's gonna change the world, but it'll do better than not doing it, I guess. I don't know, just a thought. But range anxiety is not something that you get with gas vehicles because you know you're going to be able to stop at a gas station. And electric vehicles are a little different. Now I will say I, I'm using the standard uh, 110 outlet plug. So a full charge from dead to full is about five hours on that. From what I'm guessing, I'm estimating, and I will have those final numbers for you uh, by the end of my review. An accurate representation. You know, maybe I shouldn't. Maybe I shouldn't top it off. Maybe I should try to wear the battery out and then do a full charge, see how long that actually takes. I probably won't charge it while I'm at the shop then. That's interesting. We were down to almost 60 miles of range. And now that we've just kind of slowed down a little bit, we're back to 64. I'm pretty sure that those numbers are immediate usage response. So like the way you use it. Yeah, we just dropped from 64 to 62. I, I don't think gas vehicles equate that quickly. I, I think it's a little bit more math involved. Um, so I could be wrong. But this thing's torque will fucking pull you off this bike. It's actually nuts. Now, if you have the charging cable with you, I wouldn't be as worried. However, like let's say that you have a 120 mile trip, you're probably not gonna make that in one zip. You're gonna need to stop and pull over and charge. That means you're gonna have to find a charge station 
uh, or a place that has an outlet that you can chill for five hours, right? Or however long you need. I think the supercharging on these bikes is around an hour. Again, I'm gonna have to find a supercharging station to make, make sure I can figure that out. Uh, kind of hard in rural Georgia. I know there's one at WOW. There's one at um, AMP, but I'm worried about not making it to AMP on this thing because of the way I ride. It's all highway and back roads, which means that I'm gonna be fucking goosing it. I wonder if I could eco mode my way there. Do you think we ought to do a challenge where I see if I can make it to AMP? It's about a two hour trip. I'd basically be riding up there, charging it, and then riding back. But that'd be to see if we could make it, you know? I bet if I ecoed it the whole way, we could make it. I doubt that I would eco it though. All right, we're gonna do a... Zero to 60, that was fucking, that was just straight full pin. I wonder if I could build up the brake a little bit and then kind of launch it. We'll try that at the next stop. I'm starting to think, at least my general consensus of how this bike is going to be beneficial for people, it's not a primary bike. I don't find this to be your primary and only motorcycle, unless you have several other vehicles and riding isn't really your thing. Like even if I had a Tesla given to me, I would still have other gas vehicles because we don't have the infrastructure for it to where uh, you could rely solely on having an electric vehicle. At least where I live uh, and what I do, it does not fit, it does not check my boxes, if you will. Boxes remained unchecked. Uh, however, that could change. Do, that could totally change after this month of having this bike. I could totally turn around and be like, this is, this is fine, anybody could do this. Um, I'm gonna put a big X to doubt that right now, but uh, I've been wrong before. It's happened once or twice, you know, I'm not afraid to admit it. It's just really, it's odd. I rode it to the gym today, I uh, just, and then I got cut short because I've got a bunch of service techs coming to the shop to fix small stuff. Uh, and I, that's another reason I'm heading to the shop is to meet up with some of them as well. But being able to just plug your bike in overnight, I, I haven't let it charge overnight because I don't know if I trust it to do that without burning my house down. I'm sure it's safe, but I don't know that. But the idea to just go about your day, come home, plug it in and it be ready for you in the morning and like you don't have to do anything, you don't have to worry about lubing your chain, you know, you don't have to worry about uh, feathering the clutch, changing oil. Really the only thing you need to worry about on this bitch is tires and brakes. It's belt driven, which is gonna eliminate the every 10,000 uh, chain change or however often you guys change your chain. You don't have to worry about lubing it. Really the only thing you gotta worry about is brakes and tires. And even the brakes are not going to get used as much because of the engine braking. It's really convenient. Like uh, I'm just backing off the throttle and it feels like I'm applying a light brake. And though I'm not, and it's actually regenerating the motor. So that's, that's fucking cool, right? That's really fucking cool. All right, we've gone about eight miles and only realistically lost four miles of range. We're at 61 miles. So that's, that's a good ratio. That's a very good ratio. Like a two to one ratio on expected to one. But I have a feeling that as the battery gets progressively more diminished, um, like throughout a ride, it will wear out faster. 100% and 50% are not linear. I believe, I could be incorrect about that, but that has been my, that has been my history with, with electricity and electric vehicles. Okay. Appreciate you. All right, we're gonna do this a little launch here. If this guy doesn't turn behind me. Perfect. All right. Now we're going to try to build up the brake a little bit too. All right. This is a nice straight road. All right. Jeez. Zero to a hundred is pretty quick. I think this is going to beat the brakes off of my Jixer. I really do. Now, obviously, the Jixer can go faster than 120. That's about where this thing, I think, is pegged out at. Giggity. What's up, buddy? Whew. All right. Got my live stream back up and running again, as well as got my buddy what he needed. Fantastic. Yeah, man, the, uh, the live stream thing has been interesting. Let me talk about that, but let me get back on the bike first. I don't want to see her in the parking lot and talk about it all fucking day. On? How long does it take to start up? Oh, like that. It's immediate. No shit. I'm leaving the shop with 57 miles of range. When I first pulled out, I left the house 
with 70 miles of range. Went to the gym, came back with 65. Now I'm down to 56, 55. That was mostly from that one hit. So we did, including our launch, we did run about 10 miles from my house to the shop. I would say uh, it's relatively accurate. If you're not gonna goon it, it probably is a little bit more reasonable, but I think everybody knows that most bikers are not reasonable. No brakes, by the way. All right, so now I was at the gym. My buddy called and let me know he's on the way a little bit earlier than I expected. Uh, not his fault, it's my fault. Poor planning on my part. I'm, I'm the worst when it comes to time. My toxic trait is that somehow I think I can get an hour's worth of stuff done in 20 minutes, and it's been like that my whole life. So it's just, just not great. Okay, can we fucking go? So another thing I will say before I continue on the, the, the range anxiety. So I have, I've had this, I've been working on this project. You guys can let me know um, what you guys think about this. So I downloaded, like I said, all of my moto vlogs, every single one of them from start to finish. I did remove some of the videos where people I don't fuck with no more or said some things that I was like, ah, maybe I don't want to put that in the, the compilation. But anyway, I downloaded them all, condensed them into like one 70 hour uh, reel, essentially one 70 hour long video and it is just playing on repeat on my live stream I originally had it set up at the house but my house is if you guys watch me on twitch you know that my internet drops like once a day sometimes and I have to manually reset the live stream every time I do that it's not like twitch where if you lose connection, the live stream automatically pulls back up. YouTube does not do that. You have to basically create a new broadcast every time. So the, the stream was going in and out a bunch. I think it pissed off a bunch of people because they're like, dude, I don't like having this thing going on and off all the fucking time. And uh, I also don't, some people were also like pretty unsure about the live stream. They're like, I don't like it being at the top of my feed. Actually, that was only one one person, but it, the, it was the only criticism that I noticed was that somebody said they didn't like my logo appearing on top. Can you get in your fucking lane? Is that that hard? Um, some some one person said that they didn't like my live stream popping up at the top of their notifications all the time, which I also understand. So I'm gonna try it again. If it's not good for everybody like I want it to be this time around, I'm gonna have to figure out something else. I thought about putting it on Twitch, but I say gamer words in my videos from time to time. Holy shit, dude. Is this guy drunk or texting? It's the middle of the day in Georgia, so I give it 50-50. But I, I can't do it on Twitch because I say the gamer words, I say the bad words, Twitch will ban me for that. So I can't put it on Twitch. I'm considering putting it on, is it Kick? Rumble? Whatever the new one, that like, the YouTube killer one. I've been considering putting some of my videos up there and uh, switching over to some of that. You know, I, I have been considering that. So that is a, uh, a thought of mine as well. So, I don't know, man. I'm not trying to piss people off. I'm not trying to make people angry at me for doing this, but I think it's a cool idea. And 99.9% and .9 of the response has been really solid. I just don't like inconveniencing or aggravating other people. You know, it's like, if I can continue to give people cool free stuff for what they want without it being a problem, that's all I want. You know, the live streams immediately get demonetized, so I'm not making money off of it. It's just something I think that's kind of cool. Anyway. See, now we're back almost up to 60 miles of range, which is good. That means that we've technically used in less than five miles to go about 12 miles. Another thing that I've heard about these bikes is that they uh, blow dick on the highway because you don't have any regen from braking. Um, I, I haven't touched the brakes on this bike hardly ever. I was telling my buddy that you barely don't have to touch the brakes. But you do that and you're going to wear out the battery really fast. I think that it's it's the, the convenience of having an electrical vehicle that you can charge comes with the stigma of having to be conscious of the range. When I hop on my motorcycle, my gas jixer, I don't think about how far I need to go. I don't think about um, stopping at the nearest gas station. It doesn't even pop into my head as far as like things that I consider. But you definitely have to be more conscious of stuff like that with an electric bike. I, I suppose with an electric car as well, but you have a much greater range capacity in an electric car because it's got bigger batteries. But, and this is a big but, this is a lot of me uh, thinking I know how it's gonna work. I have a feeling that uh, an electric motorcycle will respond a lot better to casual riding then an electric car will respond to casual driving. You have a lot less weight, you have a lot less momentum going here. I think because of just the weight factor alone, better overall miles per gallon, or mi miles per gallon, miles per charge. But we'll see how true that is. The battery still says 64%. I think that's about the percentage that it's been at. It was at 80% 
when I left the house. And I have done fucking nothing today. I, I rode to the gym, I rode to the shop, and then now I'm riding back to the gym. And my overall prediction is that this bike would be great as a mild commuter bike. If you have less than an hour ride to your work, and there's a place where you can plug it in to a wall outlet for four to five hours a day while you're at work, I think that this bike is totally fine. I think that there is no reason why this bike shouldn't work or even greater results if they have a fast charger or like a good Sunday ride. If you want just a good little Sunday ride that's not, that's not farther than two hours, I would say that this bike is probably gonna be um, close, to, cl close to that. And for me, I kind of don't do that. I essentially work from home or from my shop, so I don't have a very long commute. I can charge at my shop while I'm working. And it's also to be known that this is also in the non-eco mode. From what I understand, I, it's in canyon mode, which I believe is the most powerful version uh, of the modes that you can put on. You know, you can put sport, eco, all this other shit. So we should probably do a test between eco and sport mode to see how they do, how much they drastically differ from each other. I think all the difference is, is just a power slider inside the ECU, basically being like, you can have all the power or half the power, you know, or maybe it's a percentage on your throttle control, etc. But for that short ride, for my short little commutes that I did today, I've had zero range anxiety with this. Mostly because I have had the charger on me and I know where my route is, but you know. And my opinions on this will more than likely drastically change. Fucking A, a little bit pulled out there. The convenience of just being able to spin that wheel up like it's nothing is insane though. All right, just like that, we're home. All together, we burned about shit. We burned about 20% of our battery in about, about 20 miles of range. And I would say in about 20 miles of riding. That's actually uh, considering like how I was riding both on and off the throttle, hauling ass. Not bad, it seems fairly accurate. I, uh, it's hard to say. Okay, for short trips, I don't feel range anxiety. I think this is actually kind of more or less what this bike was designed for, are these short back and forth trips to work or to the gym or to ride around town. Right now, I currently don't see this as being a hardcore long ride motorcycle, but that could absolutely change. That could absolutely change, we'll see. I intend to do a lot more riding on this thing. So thank you guys for watching and uh, we'll see you in the next one. And we're gonna end today's video by saying thank you to Zydax Computers for sponsoring today's video. Now, one of the things that puts Zydax Computers above its competitors is the fact that it has a lifetime warranty on parts and labor. Meaning that if you're outside of your parts manufacturer warranty, you're still covered 100% by Zydax Computers. Your CPU blows up at 13 months, even with a one year manufacturer warranty, you're still 100% covered. All the Zydex computers are hand-built in Salt Lake City, Utah, and it's 100% USA tech support only. They also run extensive quality control checks to make sure that whatever computer that you get is perfect. And they are also experts in customization, custom LEDs, laser etching, color, paint, etc. And they still provide you with the best prices despite high demand, high cost, inflation, etc. They've got you covered. You know me, I'm always using my computer for gaming and editing, so it's very important to me to have a good custom computer that I can rely on. And it's really nice because since this is my job, if something goes out in my computer, I don't have to front that cost. It's a lifetime warranty. So click the link in my description, check out their products. They're awesome. Thank you Zydex for supporting today's video and I'll see you guys in the next one. I got to throw those in the ocean later so I can recharge the eels and then to charge this thing. Oh, that's cute. And just uh, like that. And it should pop on and let us know that it's charging. Oh, there it goes. It says full charge in three hours. Not bad. I can go inside, take a nap and a shower, and this thing will be ready to go for a full ride.